What's your favorite desi sweet? Um, um uh kheer. Cham cham. Uh the kulfi. Gulab jamun. <laughs> What is happening? Man, I was very excited to do this podcast. That answer just went to so many different directions. <laughs> I'm I'm actually upset because I wanted Kofi. Yo, I'm glad I got it. I was so scared. I was like, "Wait. Oh yeah, Kofi." Kofi is like, like ice cream by the way. They see ice cream. Yeah, we have to we have to describe what these oh, things facts, even yeah, are yeah. because yeah. people don't know. So Kofi is like they see ice cream. Facts. You said what, Amber? I said kheer because it's like the only like not crazy sweet weird uh, rice pudding. It's rice pudding. Rice pudding. Listen, I, I said uh really. chum chum which is like a sweet. like an oily sweet yeah. dough ball. And you said gulab jamun, which is the same thing. It's, it's, it's kind of like a brown ball pause. Wait, so both of you guys said gulab jamun. <laughs> oh my <then>. gosh! <laughs> Can we get like leave a disclaimer, like what these pause things are? Oh yeah, because okay. he's gonna say if, them a if lot. If you haven't noticed, um, yeah. we have a special guest co-host in the building. That's true. Uh, his name is Ayan Zubair. Shout out! That's true. That's true. He's Advanced. a good friend of ours um, from New York. And don't forget it. I'm from New York. <laughs> please, please don't forget it. Don't forget it. Um, and you were here for what? I'm You're in for Baltimore for what? Uh, Ikna convention, which is a convention of, I guess, Muslim people all across this great land. Oh, what are they? We're just like chilling, right? Or like, what's that Ikna? Uh, so it's a lot of like, um, like lectures and stuff by different Muslim scholars. Um, it's like the Comic Con for Muslims. Yeah. yeah, everyone dresses up as their favorite he- Muslim heroes. And yeah, fun time. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I mean, everyone does like dress up. They like, dress up, yeah. yeah, but like not as their Muslim superhero. Just like, as just like Muslim. As yo, in, uh, Muslim superhero Itahaj Muhammad was there. Yes. Oh yeah. Wait, did anybody see her? I did. Yeah. You, really? Yeah. You Dude, we had an awkward encounter. She's with on her. the vlog. No way. Yeah, she's on the vlog. Are you serious? Yeah. That's Wait, crazy. so Saad and I went. And what did like, she do? We're like, hey, hey, yeah. Oh, by the way, she's like a Olympic uh, fencer, fencer right. medalist. What are, you, my, what are you doing every time, over there? Every time I say serious, my Siri goes off. Oh. Pause. Pause. And so pause, she starts pause, playing. Pause, 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 pause. <laughs> What's wrong with you? Mr. Okay, wait, so what happened with so, Ibtahaj Mohammed? Um, so she's, she's the Olympian fencer, yeah, fencer. first hijabi mm-hmm. Olympian, whatever, right? And so Saad and I, Saad really wanted to go. And I was like, yeah, I'm down to go and meet her because everyone else already met her. So we go and she's like selling clothes at her booth. Mm-hmm. And Saad and I were like, yeah. we were really nervous. Yeah. Saad was like, oh, this is my first celebrity that I ever met, which is false because he met Hasan Minhaj. But oh, yeah. um, twice, sec- twice. But um, wow. yeah, once before the fame. You Once salty? Before the <laughs> I, you know, you jealous, bro? Solid. I'm very salty, bro. <laughs> you know right now. So we were really nervous to meet her, and Solid was like, Solid wanted to really put her on the vlog, and he was like, "Hi, um, we're big fans. Like you're an icon." Like Solid was really like, you know, stuttering a lot uh-huh. and stuff, and he was just like very not confident, and he was just like, uh, and he was like, "Can I vlog this?" And she's like, "Vlog what?" And he was like, uh, this, like the booth and everything. And she's like, sure. And then he's like, she's like serious. Yeah. She was really serious. She was like kind of annoyed and wow. or something. I don't know. Maybe it's the way we were approaching her or something. And mm-hmm. Saad holds up and he's like laughing. He's like, yeah, so we're here with Ittahaj Muhammad. And she's like doing a transaction for one of her clothes. She wasn't even like paying attention to the uh-huh. vlog or anything. And he was like, yeah, we got Ittahaj Muhammad, the Olympic medalist. She's a icon. I don't think she's even, she wasn't even paying attention. And mm-hmm. like, we just walk away. That is so really bad. Thank you. You yeah. guys like ruined it. Yeah, we did. Oh, man. No, I mean. Did like, you meet her? No. I walked yeah. away for like those five minutes. Dang, so. That's a good ruined. thing you did. <laughs> yeah, apparently. <laughs> did you meet her, Ayo? No. You know who was there, though? Ali Bluj. He was at Ikna. No! No yeah. way. So I didn't You're see lying. him. I, I didn't run into him, but my friend hit me up and was like, yo, Ali Bluj is here. No um, way. Which because he actually emailed me right before because I had a question. Who, who uh, runs the, what's the name of the, the, apartment. Apartment. the apartment? The apartment. He does yeah. the apartment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's been on MTV like yeah. Big for a while yeah, before did. that. Oh, that's... Yeah. Did, did, you, did you see him? I, I, I didn't, I didn't oh. get to see him, no. Was he, was he at a booth or something? I don't know. My friends ran, like, ran into him. Like, oh, okay. Just, wow. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was, uh, I was at the kids section. <laughs> for like two hours? Two hours. And I was playing my uh, Nintendo Switch the whole time. <laughs> it really helped pass the time. Why didn't you go to the lectures, bro? Uh, you know, <laughs> they were really crowded, so I didn't want to be in the back. You I'm know, so I glad missed you the whole this. thing, and that's how my ikna went. Mashallah, brother. I'm I gonna was, go back tomorrow and actually. I was gain expecting it to be it. more hype. 
because you, you didn't, didn't put you in didn't, the yeah, effort, you bro. didn't like imagine if we went to Playlist Live and then we never went to the panels, ne- never went to any of the things, and those were all of what we gained from all of Playlist Live anyway. I'm just saying, I went to the Baltimore Convention Center during Comic Con and I went during ICNA. I had a better time at Comic Con. That's all I'm saying. Yes, but well, you probably attended at Comic Con. You didn't attend at ICNA. And Comic Con, everyone's you wearing just, like crazy I attend, costumes. You were, I didn't you were in the area. There was for nothing. ICNA. There was no attending. Okay, there was a costume contest. That's the only one that I attended. Uh-huh. Did you win? I wasn't in it. Why not? So why'd you attend? Yeah, fraud. I was watching. Pause. Okay, well you didn't. You didn't even attend anything <laughs> yeah, dude. here. You lost, bro. So I don't you think lost. your opinion your about Ikna sucks, even matters. Bro. Yeah. So your opinion doesn't matter. So, anyways, we so after Ikna, we had this show at Towson, uh, where we all performed. We um, had one mic. We had to mic. share between the three of us. We just passed it off. <laughs> yeah, but it was, it was cool, fun, though. you know. Like it was it's fun, yeah. A small crowd, small but, crowd. but 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 nice, cute ca- crowd. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, uh, we're going to, we're, we're doing Chicago. Maybe by the time you guys hear this, we'll have that. Um, cause that's going to be April 3rd, um, at Urbana Champagne, April 13th guys, we're coming to university of Maryland college park. So come out to that. And April 19th, we are going to be at UMBC performing, um, in Baltimore. So that's going to be a lot of fun. Um, and, uh, Jan, let's talk about you a little bit. Sure. Like you're here. Um, so, uh, Something that you recently had was obviously we know you from um, interviewing us for something that you had called On the Rise, which, mm. which we'll talk about later. Sure. Um, and you have this podcast that you do called What Muslims Look Like. Right. Um, recently, you just interviewed uh, a Bengali rapper who is up and coming named Anik Khan. Mm-hmm. Uh, what was that like for you? All right, first thing, I'm actually wearing his merch right now. If you guys can see this. Shout like, um, out. There's a restaurant in Queens called Fatima's Chinese. He actually did a collab with them. I'm wearing the shirt right now. It's pretty. It's pretty fresh. Check it out. Um, is, guess, is it like uh, halal Chinese? Yeah, halal Chinese. Halal Chinese. Yeah. Okay. yeah Fatima's right. Chinese. Yeah. Okay. I'm super. I've been going there since I was like five or six or whatever. We get it, dude. You're from yeah. New York. I'm from New York. We're dead ass. Dead ass <laughs> can, can I like? Can I say dead ass on the thing or? That... <laughs> I mean, it's a yeah. New York lingo. So. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah. So my my cousin Shifa and I we started the podcast of what Muslims look like because, yeah. you know. I mean, by and large, the, the society or media at large portrays Muslims as, you know, these like boogeymen or, you know, if we're on the news, it's for bad things, right? It's never for anything good, right? And people assume Muslims look like this one stereotypical, like, big guy with a beard, beard yelling, yeah. yelling Allahu Akbar, right? Um, but really what Muslims look like is, like, Muslims don't look like one thing. That's the whole point of the title, right? And I wanted to highlight, we wanted to highlight different people of different backgrounds and different, you know, ways of life. So the thing with Anik actually... Um, it's, are are non Muslims listening to this podcast? Yeah, actually, oh, that's good. Um, you know, obviously, you know, it's not like it's not like I have like you know ten million subscribers. But, you know, it's, it's pretty right. small right now. But my non Muslim friends ha- get a lot out of it. I think even maybe more than the Muslim friends, mm-hmm. okay. because you know, a lot of my even people who know me, they don't really know too many Muslim people, hmm. right? And they're like, oh, I didn't know you know there was Muslim rappers. I didn't know there was Muslim you know content creators like you guys. I had you guys on as well, right? And so on and so forth. Well, um, Amina Suleiman, we, she's my second guest. She works for the NFL and she's a hijabi, right? So like these people who like, you know, you wouldn't like expect, you know what I mean? The Muslims to look like this. So I think actually it's the most beneficial for them. Okay. Um, so, so then having a Nikon, yeah. what, was, what did that mean to you? It was, you know, I'm not going to lie. I was fangirling a little bit. Like I, I, <laughs> I, I was a little bit nervous. I was actually really nervous. I'm going to lie to you. Um, you were dropping the pen. And yeah. Dropping, yeah. I actually, I actually dropped an F bomb bags and it was, it was, it was terrible. I was like, <laughs> and my brother's in the crowd and I'm like, okay, this is, a, this is a dub. It was um, cool though, because yeah. it was like genuine. Yeah. Genuine, yeah. And Anik was really cool. About yeah. It, like he, 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 like he understood the fact that, you know, I really look up to him. Right. Yeah, and, yeah. and what I told him then, what I'll say right now is the fact that like when we were growing up, right. Like, you know, five, six, seven, eight years ago, we didn't have anyone in media, in hip hop, in politics to look up to. Mm. Right. And nowadays it's so cool seeing like, like you guys rap, right. And listening to Anik, right. Mm. Or like, you listen, you, well, you, if you feel like politics, you watch Hassan Minhaj's stuff on, on, you know, daily show. Right. Or if you watch movies, Riz Ahmed's on the movies. Mm-hmm. Right. And the point I made there is we, we need to do more to get women of color involved. Right. That's, that's like Mindy Kaling is probably the only one I can think of off the top of my head. Right. But it's that's why I feel an affinity towards them that, you know, I mean, like they're doing something that's so cool. So that's why I think it's really important for me to have that opportunity. And I, you know, I really thank Anik for that. That's really cool. Yeah. Um, 
And what do you see like forward going with with this podcast? Like, what do you hope to get, um, or what do you hope that people get out of this? Um, so I think there's two things, right? So for the Muslim community, I really wanted it to be somewhere, some like a platform where you can find like really cool things about people you may not have known otherwise, and find a pride in that, right? Because like like Anik said, right? Guyanese people love being Guyanese, right? And Dominican people love being uh, Dominican. Right, and he's like, I didn't love being Bengali until I went to Bangladesh and saw the beauty, beauty of the culture. Mm. Right, so in the, in the kind of like a parallel, right, a lot of Muslim people like where I grew up was a predominantly white working class neighborhood until recently, right, and I felt ashamed to be Muslim, right, and like it, it's unfortunate, right, but like I because I was bullied for it, but nowadays like I walk more confidently knowing that these people are out there, right, and I want this podcast to be somewhere you can amplify these voices so that that kid in uh, Kentucky or whatever case may be can be like, listen. I'm Muslim, I'm proud of it, right? Because so-and-so is Muslim, and so-and-so is Muslim, and so-and-so is Muslim. Right? How long do you think that's going to be a thing, though? Like, the, So you mean like the, the, the normalization of Muslims in yeah, society? Exactly. I mean, brown people in general, not just Muslims, but... Yeah. And Superwoman is like the face yeah. of YouTube right saying, now, right? right? She's yeah. hung up in Times Square all over the place. Um, how long do you think that that's realistically going to be a thing? So, I mean, I'll give my thoughts, but I'd be interested to hear your opinions as well. Yeah. But yeah. Um, I'm... You know, a lot of people are very, like, pessimistic about, you know, the current day and age of Trump being president or whatever. But, in all honesty, I'm really optimistic about our place in America in the next 20, 30 years, right? Because our parents came in the 70s, 80s, 90s, right? And immigrant parents, their job is to make sure food's on the table, mm-hmm. right? And I always say, you know, their job is to make sure that we survive, and it's our job to make sure that we thrive, right? Mm-hmm. And by the, time that, like, by the time that our kids are going to grow up, right, they'll have all the experiences that we had. Right, and we'll, we'll we'll we will absorb the best of the Pakistani culture, and the best of the American culture, right? Hopefully, right. And our kids will be able to have those opportunities and have access to those platforms and resources, so that you know when they're growing up, right, they know what the SAT is growing up, right? Like day one, right? They know, you know, it's not just becoming a doctor, lawyer, engineer. You can become content creators, or you can become this, you can become this. And I think so. By the year what was it, twenty eighteen? Right now. Mm-hmm. I would say by like 2040, I think we'll make serious inroads and, in, you know... That's pretty late. 2040? Yeah. Especially uh, uh, next generation you're talking about? I, I'm a long-term person. But yeah. I, I, what, what do you guys think? I'm, I'm saying like, way yeah. later. Two, yeah. One, two years. One, two years. I, I think what slightly think? longer than that, but... Somewhere in the middle between the two. Yeah. Because, like, I mean, with technology, things are much faster. I, there's a bunch of different cultures that have been trying to, like, you know, put themselves That's also on the map as well but i feel like you know uh we're really growing in such a technological advanced era that like yeah i mean it might we be two having, years we were having that uh, before we started the podcast we were talking about the whole um it was actually you that asked a question on our last strange exchange about kim kardashian right. and culture appropriation right? right so when we were little we would look for any sign mm. of anybody <laughs> doing anything for our culture yeah. Yeah. and I think had this had Kim Kardashian wearing a lenga happen when we were little, it would have been iconic. Right. But right. at this day and age, mm. we have so much representation. I think a lot more than what we like, just so much more than we had because we had none then. Mm. Now we have like choices, right. and now it's like you can actually say that oh, this person, for example, uh, Nav, right, mm. the uh, rapper from Toronto people say is falsely representing our culture even though he has no obligation to and like um he doesn't even make ties to it but people are saying like okay this person represents our culture this person does not this person is um ruining our culture this and but that see, that's i why don't think these are conversations that we would have had years ago i think we would have looked for any sign of anybody doing anything pakistani indian muslim related whatever yeah but the thing is and that's why i don't i don't think it's been a one or two year process to get normalized right because what does normalization mean right it means that my race, my religion doesn't matter at all at what I do, right? When a white person makes music, they don't like have to talk about their white identity. You see what I'm saying? Because they're normalized right. in society, okay. right? But people are like, oh, Nav, he's, he's, he's this, he's this. Listen, <laughs> this guy is making music. No, <laughs> Nav. Yeah, Nav, Nav is making music. What, what's so funny? Nav. Is it, is it like Nav, Nav or Jota or something? Nav Jota, right? <laughs> Maybe like, that's the way to pronounce it, but yeah. right. like his rap. Whatever, whatever I'm, I'm calling him Nav, you know what Nav. I mean? Well, well, even that though, right? You can be like, oh, like you're whitewashing. Your name. People can say this, right? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. But sure. at the end of the day, like this is how he lives his life, yeah. right. right? And like, who am I to say that the way he lives his life is wrong or right? Yeah. Right? And yeah. like, I think the, the argument for Kardashian, the Kim Kardashian thing is most, I mean, I'll ask you about it because you're, you're a girl, right? Right. Like when we were like, I think. <laughs> I think. <laughs> 
I'm not even going to say it. Um, he knew what I was going to say, but... Pause. Um, so, like, in 2004, 2005, right? Um, the Punjabi MC, Jay-Z thing dropped, you know what I mean? Like, the... Yeah. N -n 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 -n, that, that thing, right? And that was, like, the... An this still is the anthem, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. you play it and, like... Everybody's you know, out on the yeah, dance floor yeah. immediately. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, and you made a good point, right? Now, like, nowadays, we have so much representation, but I still think that, like, as long as you're not being disrespectful, right? So, like, for example, if you're putting hijab on... But like wearing it in a way that's disrespectful to the society, or like burning Qurans or whatever, right? Like that's like wrong. That's right. wait, wait. Right. Wearing a hijab and doing what though? I mean, like, like because that's two different things. Oh, so it's like wearing a hijab, like the Mia right? Khalifa thing. Yeah, that's what okay. I was referring to. I, I didn't. Like, right. Yeah. Right. You know what I mean? Like, um, if you're a child watching this, don't search that up. Um, <laughs> Basically, wearing a hijab but trying to do things that would be the opposite right. of what somebody would typically be doing uh, openly with the hijab on. Yeah. Continue. Right, and so, but the fact that like Kim's wearing it is like that's cool. You know, what I mean, like if my white friend show up to my wedding and they want to rock the sherwani, like the dress that we wear, like that's cool. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. You know, what I mean, but like, what do you, what do you think, right? Because I know a lot of brown girls feel like even brown culture suppresses them mm -hmm. because you know girls have to be like this, like. See that's you know these straight straightforward kind of person. Mm -hmm. what, do you, what do you think about that? Well, okay, so kind of so what you were saying was that we have so much representation. I think it's also a mixture of like everybody just being butt hurt now, mm -hmm. like trying to find a reason to be upset about things. Like like we're so defensive about our culture almost that we're like, oh wait, why are you doing this? Why are you doing this? This is ours. This is ours. And I don't think it's because of an overrepresentation. I think we're just so defensive because of everything. I that's think that's happened. everybody, though. I think it, I don't think that's just us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like if you look at African Americans, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. There's a lot of that where it's just like there's a lot of people in that culture that feel like, hey, we don't need to bash each other and hold each other back. Uh, but at the same time, they're looking for more representation when, compared to other minorities, it's just like. They wish they had that much. Well, yeah, but, what I think yeah. is actually is a really, like, actually like a really important point though is that nowadays social media gives everyone a voice, right? So 2004, 2005, when Punjabi MC drops, right, with the Jay Z thing, yeah. right? Even if I felt butthurt about it, I couldn't tell anyone, right? Because like I didn't have a platform, hmm. right? Nowadays, literally every single person can that's offer their opinion, right? Which is, I mean, that's the democratization of of life, right? Which is awesome. Yeah. But at the same time, at the same token, you guys are talking about technology and normalizing society. It also normalizes the hatred as well. Right, so fake mm -hmm. news spreads very fast right now. Why? Because Facebook worked for Cambridge Analytica and these kind of things, right? So technology is a double-edged sword. And everyone having a voice is also a double-edged sword. Right? Yeah, democracy, democracy in general, right? Like you can have, you can like great people or you can like not so great people. And at the end of the day, it's the people's choice. So we're talking yeah. about representation of brown people, but then right. we're also talking about whether you consider that as representation or not. Mm -hmm. So if there's if there's a brown person in the media, right, right, that's what I'm saying. Like in one or two years, I think there's just going to be a lot more. But also, also the, the question is like, but wh whose opinion should be seen as like correct, valid. right? Because at the end of the day, right, I could feel like, you know, I if I want to go into comedy, I can make it, right? Because there's you know there's Virdas, there's Hasan Minhaj, you know, so many people going to comedy who are brown, right? Russell Peters is one of Russell, the greatest comedians right. in the right. game. You know, yeah. one of the most successful, especially on a global level. Yeah. yeah. It's insane. Aziz, right? Like so on and so forth, right? You're right. Um, so it's it's all so and, and that's the whole thing, right? The idea that like I, my, me, Ayan Zubair owns a culture. Facts. It's, it's such a mm -hmm. like, perverse way of thinking, right? Like at the end of the day, like I can be like, hey, I'm not cool with it, but why should you live based on my standards? Right. Yeah. You don't have to. Yeah. Right. And the same with like it's like Islam, right? People are like, oh, you're not a Muslim because of this. Well, who said this? Like, who, who made you the arbiter of, you know, who's Muslim, who's not Muslim? <laughs> like, who wears a hijab, doesn't wear a hijab, or who has a beard? Who, who made you the, you know what I'm saying? Which is also why, like, some of these conferences are a little bit, I'm a little bit hesitant, right? Because it's like, oh, no, the true Muslims are like this. A true Muslim looks like this. And that's, that's the whole point of what Muslims look like is, nah, a Muslim yeah. looks like many things. Yeah. You know what I mean? And at the end of the day, it's not, it's God's job to judge, not our job to judge. Yeah. Because, right? see, like, when I say, like, one or two years, my standards are different. My side, yeah. than yours yeah. and hers and his and, and, and anybody else's because if you look at uh you know we've asked a question like this on our on our series brown code mm -hmm. you know um about Great zane stuff, that. That, that fantastic about stuff. zane thank, thank, you. Yeah. thank you about zane Malik, right mm. and there was people on the on the show yeah, that like it, yeah. we didn't tell them to say anything but like they were like you know what no zane does not represent mm -hmm. our culture and and 
for them to think that they feel like, you know what, there's still not anybody that we have representing me um, in the music industry because Zayn doesn't do the part fully, mm -hmm. right? Even though on a, a realistic level, he like he can. He doesn't do it for you, and that's yeah, that's exactly. that's the main yeah, thing, yeah, right? Yeah. Cause, so that's why the arts, right? Which we're talking about the arts, right? Mm -hmm. The arts is subjective or are subjective, yeah. right? And like technology, like technology is objective, right? So a Ferrari is objectively faster than a Toyota Camry, right? But who's to say that Nav's music? is less representative of his identity than sweatshop boys of their identity. Yeah. Who's to say this? You know what I mean? And they both think they represent themselves and they're yeah. both will be correct. Yeah. You know, as long as they're doing it in a genuine manner. So to you know, play devil's advocate, would I be able to say like one represents our culture more than the other? For you. For me. Okay. For you. So you you can relate more to something. Right. Right? Like sweatshop boys I hear it and like at the end of um, phone tap, he's um, Riz is talking to his parents on the phone. And his, his mom's like, golly, golly, chore, like, stop cursing. This kind of, you know, like, and I relate to that. It's like, yeah. my, mom puts, my mom would say the same thing to me, right? But if you grew up in a household where that's not the case, then who's to say that Nav's thing about... You I know, think I'll, generally you can. What yeah. you're saying, I think generally you can say that somebody clearly is... But, but that's more like embracing a culture yeah. and not as much as like represent... Like, well, some like people Nav, aren't as... Nav's not really... Don't put it out there. Yeah. Like Nav's is not like, oh, I'm brown and... That's tries true. to do like yeah. brown references. Well, he does say like a brown I'm, boy, but but like he's not. Other like, than that, he's not yeah. like oh I'm Punjabi yeah. like yeah. all the time yeah. or yeah. like oh I'm eating all this food. But sweatshop boys, they put like it's uh, you know yeah. Pakistani and Indian yeah. references in their music and stuff right. like that. So yeah. yeah, I mean it's it's a it's a it's a crazy conversation yeah. we could go on forever. Yeah, go but, for hours, yeah. but yeah, I mean it's it's interesting to it interesting, think yeah. about. Um, you you mentioned that you're from uh, New York only. That us. 500 times <laughs> um what was it like growing up in new york what was your childhood like you said you were like bullied and stuff like yeah. what was that about? i mean here's the thing right like i don't want to make it seem like you know i woke up every day and it was like you know the guy stole my lunch money in the street it wasn't like that either <laughs> um but you know actually what would if, if i can take like a minute or two just to talk about this um my first real memory to be honest with you is probably 9 11 wow. and I, I remember because i was at home like in general in, in life like, like honestly yeah. i mean you were how what? old were you four uh, years old four years old, four years old. okay that makes sense okay. um because i remember it was um i was at home watching spongebob right and it, it's, it's completely serious right and you know how spongebob sometimes cuts off in like in the middle of the episode and does like a different thing mm -hmm. right so i was watching spongebob and all of a sudden like like there's like you know breaking news you know you know, so, uh, something has it, has it the first time. Oh, are you saying like you thought it was a SpongeBob? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, the so, fish when he's yeah. So, so, the news? so I'm four years old, right? I don't know anything, right? Like I don't understand what's going on. And after a while, I'm like something's up, right? And then my mom comes in, she's like crying, and I'm like, what is going on? And then a couple of hours later, my brother coming home from school, my mom, my dad's home from school, my my, my dad's home from work. I'm like, I don't understand this, right? I overhear my parents talking about how my uncle got beat up in Queens, and I'm like, what? In, like like, and like, you know, kids are very smart, right? Like you start like internalizing things very yeah. quickly, right? And like, oh, don't, you know, don't go to preschool. Cause I went to like a Catholic preschool, like, chill out for a little bit. You know, my brother's gonna, like, what's, what is, what, what's going on, right? And growing up, I realized how formative of, of experience that's for all of us, mm -hmm. right? Cause I think, I think as a country, we haven't kind of coped with 9-11 really in, 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 a, in a meaningful way, right? Kind of like, I think we have vestiges of that kind of lingering on, which is why this Islamophobia things keep, keep continuing, right? Um, but anyway, so that was a, a little bit of a tangent, but, you know, growing up, I grew up uh, on Long Island, um, like probably 15 minutes away from Queens. Um, and it, it was, you know, by and large, it was good. You know, my parents are doctors, so I was, you know, I, I was, you know, I was never lacking for anything. My parents, you know, didn't necessarily spoil me, but it was good. Um, but in terms of, you know, bullying or whatever, you know, I mean, there was, my neighborhood was white working class. And there were some really, really good people, and there were some people who, you know, weren't as good. There's a teacher who... Um, still teaches there actually at the high school and you know literally every single Muslim person that's ever taken her class has said she's racist and kids have actually dropped out like she's an honors, honors teacher right people have dropped out of honors because of her this um, is interesting that yeah. it's happening in New York because I feel like New York is one of Very the most diverse oh, no, no. Long, Long Island is, is um, oh Long Island okay. yeah um, and that's the thing the power sh and so you know the, going back to the question about how long will it take to normalize us right I I'm very much into politics right so I'm talking about normalization of the political structures. So what is that? The school boards, the superintendents, the teachers, the presidents of the United States, senators, whatever, right? That's a long-term process. So my school right now is very, very diverse now, right? This is like probably, I'd say like 25, 30% brown people, um, probably 15% black people and like Hispanic people and so on and so forth. But 
literally every single teacher is white. Okay. Every administrator is white. That's interesting. Right? And I'm, I'm not trying to say like why people are racist, but I'm saying if the people, the there's no representation of that. Yeah. Um, and that's an issue. And that's, that needs to change. You know what okay. I mean? So, so growing up uh, in this type of area, has this shaped who you are and what you do right now as a person? Yeah, I mean, I, I think it was formative in the sense of um, kind of like the way I perceive, perceive the world. Okay. Right? And in the same way you guys create content, right? That kind of like the Roman Pono stuff, right? Is, is meant to kind of create an outlet for your creative energies and represent your, the Pakistani culture, right? The way you see it, right? Because you're like, oh, that wasn't that, there wasn't really too many people doing that and you guys want to fill that space up. Whereas for me, like I was very much like, there really aren't that many Muslim people involved in the political scene. Right, and I was from a young age. I don't know why. I just kind of like liked hearing myself talk. I guess, mm-hmm. um, which kind of I, I had a speech impediment too, which is like a kind of weird duality. But I knew kind of that I want to make sure that like my kids, and this is my whole mo, right? I want to make sure that people after me don't have to experience the stuff that I had to do. You know what I mean? And like, why should they have to? I mean, like, if if we we paid our dues and we had to encourage you know and kind of racism and these kind of things, right? But why should our kids and people coming after us have to do the same? What are you studying in school? Economics. Economics. Yeah, yeah. So, like, you're doing um, a lot of this media stuff on the side. Yeah. You had your uh, podcast, What mm-hmm. Muslims Look Like. And then you have this series called On the Rise, which is, like, a, a journalistic yes. um, an angle. And so how did you get into that series? The whole concept of On the Rise is, you know, catching people on the come up, right? And giving them a platform. So initially, I used to write for the Huffington Post. I had, like, a blogger thing on there, so I could do whatever I wanted on there. And... It, it was cool because um, I've always liked to write, and I, I do a lot of writing. But in this way, it kind of let me do my creative stuff, right? So like, okay. connecting with creative people. And that's how I met you guys, right? Like, I hit oh. you guys up after I watched the Packet Gang video. That's dope, let's talk, right? And, and we talked, and eventually I did the write-up, whatever. Um, but I watch a lot of Gary Vee stuff, and people like that. And they always say, like, listen, if you want to really meet really interesting people, ask to interview them, because you're offering them value, mm-hmm. mm. right? Like... Who's gonna say no to someone saying, "Hey, can I interview the Huffington Post?" And, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, I'm no, I'm no like Anderson Cooper, right? But at the end of the day, the the, the platform gave me legit- legitimacy, right? That's cool. And so people who I would have never been able to access otherwise, mm. like, hey, listen, like, I'll talk to you. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, and so cool that you've met so many people yeah. along people, the way and like made those connections. And like, it's so awesome that we're sitting here right now because yeah. of because because of that, right? Yeah. Of that. And that happened like what two or three months ago? Yeah. Like, and, and I'm a, I'm a believer in like making sure that. I don't just, like, not use people, but you know what I mean, like, make sure that those things are genuine relationships, right? Yeah, so yeah. that, like, it's not just me writing an article about you guys so that I get more clout because you guys both, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's yeah. more about, like, I only write about, write about people that I actually like, mm-hmm. that, that mm-hmm. actually give me a good vibe, make good stuff, right? And there's been people who hit me up and, like, hey, listen, like, this is what I'm doing, can you write up? And I'm like, you know, honestly, like, I wish you best of luck, but I don't... <laughs> You know, you know what I mean? Like, like, like I, I don't mess with you like that. You know what I mean? Um, Wish you best of luck. No, I mean, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, no, I so, so I, I think, you know, it's a, I think everyone needs a creative outlet, right? I think that's my creative outlet. Okay. Nice. And so there's, there's this other aspect of it that, um, that you, you talk about this crab mentality. Mm. Yo, the crab mentality. The crab mentality. I'm excited for this. Yeah. What's the crab mentality? If, that, if that's the positive side is on the rise thing, then like, what's the crab mentality? I've right. waited for this moment. All right, Amber, I'm, I'm going to I'm gonna speak to Amber directly for this one, all right? Yes, because you guys yeah. have mentioned this. Yeah. Didn't explain it to me, though. So, like, have you ever seen, um, like, at Red Lobster, crabs in a barrel? Have you ever seen this before? Oh, well, sure. No. <laughs> no. No, wait. She has to understand that. To, yeah. yeah, so, like, have you ever seen, like, I don't know, grocery, store, grocery, grocery store? Grocery store. Grocery store. Yeah. Like, crabs are? Lobsters they have a and tank crabs. filled and they have with lobsters, lobsters and they're, like... Okay. For example, they're like, piled like, on yeah. top of so, each so, other. So, so, like, let's say that those are crabs and lobsters, right? So okay. Interchangeable. So, as one crab goes up, goes up, goes up, it's about to reach the surface. Right before that happens, another crab will grab the leg of of the crab and bring it down. Okay. Right, and the crab mentality, like in all seriousness, is the idea that like people in a community will get jealous of someone in that community, you know, kind of making it big, and will do whatever to sabotage that person, and like. For like too long, I think our community has done that. Like, I, I'm talking about the the Muslim community, but spe- specifically the South, South Asian community, right? Where like, as people and you guys have probably seen this as well, you know, I mean, like as you guys got more notoriety, it's like, oh, like you have no shame. Did you not do this, right? Or like you suck, you know, these kind of things, right? You know, and things much worse than that. You guys, you guys, I'm sure you know about that. Um, for me, it was like I wanted to make sure that I create platforms where we can uplift each other, because at the end of the day, like if you guys win, I win too. 
So I feel like I made it. You know what I mean? Like when Hassan Minhaj is on the White House Correspondents Center, we all feel a sense of pride. Mm-hmm. Right. Of course he does, but we do too. You know what I mean? Like when you yeah. guys get mad hits and these kind of things and you guys get these opportunities, I feel happy. Not because I did a write up on you, but just because like, hey, like you guys are around my age, like you came up with me and that's cool. You know what I mean? And like, I don't know why people have the mentality of like, oh, if they made it, I can't make it either. You know, it's one or the other. I think there's more than enough space for all of us. Yeah, you know, you nah. look you look out for a lot of people, and we actually, it's funny. We were just talking about this uh, before the podcast too, um, that you know you like to put others before yourself, and like mm. you really see the value of, uh, of especially those that that are incapable of representing themselves at times. Um, you run around campus giving tampons. Mm. Please tell me about this, okay. Mister Padman. Okay, okay, okay. So. Um, you call yourself Whatever. what? The menstrual man. Okay. Menstrual man. Yeah. Um, so how, how it came about is this, right? Um, um, a friend of mine who also works in student government and I, we made a deal with the campus recreation center, like the gym in our school, um, to use part of the funds that we give to student government. I'm the president of my student government at my school, Stony Brook University, if anyone knows who that is, um, in Long, on Long Island. But So part of those funds are used to give free menstrual hygiene products, so like menstrual pads, tampons, whatever, um, in, the, in the rec center, in the gym. Um, and so I call myself the menstrual man, like as a joke, but at the same time, like I, I see the value like um, in kind of promoting it as that, right? Because think about it, right? Like Muslims, especially Muslim men are seen as like these like, you know, backwards, you know, lalukates people, you know, lalukates means like, um, like people from like them, like the forest or whatever you want to call mm-hmm. it, right? Um, but the, the important thing is like, I big up the fact that I'm Muslim, not because I want to big myself up, but because... I want to break that misconception that we don't, you know, like, value women. And also, I mean, there's, there's a big taboo against menstruation in the brown community. This mm-hmm. is a fact. Right. right? Mm-hmm. And for me, it's like, calling myself the menstrual man is, like, kind of joking, but it, it, it eases people to that conversation of, like, I didn't know what, cause I don't have any sisters, right? I didn't know what a period was until sixth grade. No, then, I, me too, actually, to be <laughs> completely honest. Yeah. yeah. And it's like... I'm pretty sure like, one day you're like, what the hell, why am I bleeding? And you know, like, it's like, what's going on? Pause. Um, <laughs> pause. Too much information. Um, no, but the whole, the whole point being is like, I want to, you know, kind of big up those conversations of being like, listen, this is a normal human bodily process. That's so dope that, that, yeah. that, that you're the one doing this. Um, Wait, how actually do people point usually out react? the fact that he doesn't have a sister. Wait, that's yeah, actually no, important. No, that's why that's I like, think it's really cool. Yeah. But how do, how do uh, people usually react? Um, so you think, because... So I have a serious side of me, right? Which is like me right now. And then I have like the joking side of me, right? So like depending on what... And it's of, hard to tell the difference. Yeah, it's, it's really hard. I'm, I'm kind of like monotone. Because you're sarcastic. Yeah, yeah. Right. Um, a funny like side story for two seconds. So I have this red blazer that I wear around, right? Oh, no. So I'm in this meeting with like the senior administration from the school. Like, you know, the, like the big baller brands, you know, like Lonzo Ball type people, right? And <laughs> I, I was joking with them. I'm like, I'm the menstrual man. They're like, hmm, right? Um, and then I'm like, that's why I'm wearing a red blazer. Oh my and God. they're like, pause. They're, they're, they're all like, they made the face <laughs> oh. of like, they're, they're like, what? But then they started laughing. That's, that's funny. You know what I mean, like, and my whole Wait, point Wait, do you is, wear the red blazer and like go around school like past? No, no, I, it's okay. It's, it's not like I walk around with like a you know, little bag and I'm like, oh, one for you, one for you. Like, <laughs> you get a stuff. pad, you oh, get bro. a pad. <laughs> I actually have a huge ba- um, batch in my office. I don't know why. I just have them there. Um, so what was, your, what was your question? I How forget. do people react? Oh, um, I think it's, it's, you know, been pretty positive. And I, I think, you know, what's really cool is so, like, how comfortable is somebody grabbing, like, a girl grabbing, like, but I think hygiene it, products it, from you? They've, they've been, well, first of all, it's not really from me. It's from the, 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 the gym has them, like, for, like, it's open, like, an open basket type thing. Okay. Um, but sometimes people come to me and ask me for it, right? And it's cool because I've seen people get more and more on. easy. Like, more, like, it's, the conversation okay. more and more, like, accessible, right? And it's they're, not like, as weird. Yeah. And, like, it, it's kind of strange, but, like, I almost, like, n- like know when my friends are on their periods. Right, and it's like not like the weird no, way. No, that's strange. No, no, but, no that's, that's not, definitely no, no, no. strange. I, I appreciate that. I appreciate no, no, that. No, and but the whole point is this, right? Like, why is it strange? It shouldn't be strange. You know what it's I mean? a like, normal process. Because right. it's, it's like no, 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 not not the not the fact that they're going through their stuff. No, no, no I, I, I can't I can't name it to you right now. Like, oh, which friend is on? Like, I can't do that, right? But like, you know, by and large, like they're comfortable coming to me, and not even my friends, okay, okay, people. Okay. And the the most you know kind of meaningful thing or the most rewarding thing is like when there's like a random girl I don't even know on campus will be like. Hey, listen, thank you so much. Like, I know you don't know me, but, you know, the other day I was running around campus and I had my period and I didn't have a pad and I was able to get a pad from there. Aww. You know what I mean? That's and so like, nice. at the end of the day, like, I don't use menstrual pads, of course, right? Like, mm-hmm. but 
the, the, the idea that, I'm, I'm being serious, um, the, the idea that someone finds value in it, I think it's pretty cool. Yeah. You know what I mean? And like, we always talk about, you know, Islamic values, right? Like, mm-hmm. people say, you know, praying five times a day, which is really important, right? But at the end of the day, if your character is, and one really cool thing that someone said in a, in a lecture today was, if pe- everyone around you is not benefiting from your Islam, you're doing it wrong. Mm. Mm. You see what I'm saying? Like, you can't have, you can't be a good Muslim and have a bad character. Right? Yeah. And I'm not trying to say like, I'm a great Muslim, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not trying to say that, but I'm saying the idea that like, when people think about Muslim people, what Muslims look like, they should think about what Muslims act like, and that should be in a positive manner. Mm-hmm. Okay. You know what I mean? Dope. Let's, uh, let's, let's switch gears here sure. and um, go into um, some questions that we had from uh, fans, and you can obviously weigh in on this. We'd love for your um, input. Input, Pause. you have some enlightening things Pause. to say. You're inspiring. What are you oh pausing my, now no, for? Come on. What is this? Uh, yeah, like for? Lot, you you say such amazing things <laughs> and then you have this side of you. I do. I'm I'm actually like a uh, a clown. Uh, this is my <laughs> Just you can't tell the difference. Yeah, you can't you, you can't, right. you can't. It's amazing. I love it. It's awesome, man. I love it. Um too. Ionic Bond. Yo, All right. Yeah. We have we have yeah. one uh that comes from Obeyed and Bougie. Very clever name. That's a good name. <laughs> um, he said, Hi, my name is Obeid. I'm from Ohio. Ohio, Ohio, Ohio. Ohio. Cleveland, LeBron James. LeBron James. <laughs> we don't want to speculate. True. Okay. Yeah. I am so glad I discovered you guys. I love and support what you guys do. I will continue to be a loyal fan. Thank, Thank you, Obeid. Thank you. Um, okay, I was wondering if you can answer my question in your next podcast. The question is, how do you guys and the South Asian community feel about Shah Rukh Khan? More specifically, how do you guys feel about his marriage to a Hindu woman and how does the South Asian community feel? Whoa. That's intense. That went from like here to like... <laughs> I'm going to say, first of all, we cannot answer on the behalf of the South Asian community. Yeah, but right. he's Very a clearly. goat. He's These a are goat. opinions uh, of us. Only, only by us. Um, and this, these are the thoughts that we think go. Goat Bollywood actor. Yeah. yeah. I mean, when you think about like who... Is that your way of saying I don't care about any of that other stuff? He's a goat Bollywood actor. No, I'm a- answering the first part. Like, what do you think of Shah Rukh Khan? Well, He's a good Bollywood actor. Okay. Yeah. Um, Clearly, like, obviously a legend. Yeah. yeah. I, I think when anyone no thinks about Shah Rukh Khan, that's like the first thing they think of. Um, when it comes to him marrying a Hindu wife. Oh, by the way, like Muslims and Hindus, I guess there has been tendency to like fight against each other. Tension between them. Yeah, tension between the two. Um, but yeah, so I mean, when it comes to it, like a Muslim man can marry a non-Muslim woman and... Ultimately, like, even if that wasn't the case, that's his own marriage, it's his own life. I think the only thing that he's really put out into the world is, like, him being an actor and stuff. I've never seen anything super openly public about his marriage, and even if he did, that's, like, on his personal side. So I don't really have any, like, negative feelings or feelings at all about his wife being a non-Muslim I, or the fact that she's a Hindu. Hasan Minhaj is, um, yeah. what's it called, homecoming king. He kind of explained that a little bit, that he married a Hindu right. and that, like, how it could be, you know, bad for his family or whatnot. But he how, said, like... How it was a card. There's yeah, a certain amount a card. of cards you're dealt and that was a card that yeah. he would lose. So I agree with you. Like, if that's his personal life. He can do whatever he wants. Like, he's not, you no know... No negative feelings. No negative feelings. It. Yeah, I mean, look, like, at the end of the day, it's his life. You know what I mean? And... Us commenting on his life is like, you know what I mean? Like, he, if he's happy, then I'm happy for him. I thought what you said at the beginning, he's a go Bollywood actor. I leave it at that. Yeah. <laughs> I could care less about anything else, honestly. About anybody in yeah. celebrity world. Yeah. He's not my son. He's not my brother. He's not my dad. Even, right? so like, even the way that they put themselves out there, even if somebody s- shows me that they're praying, pod, that doesn't affect me yeah. right? at all. Because well, you, like, you know him and you like him for his acting. Like, why does... You and know. we we don't know what people's faces really are, yeah. yeah. Regardless, and we see all the time, especially now, of you know people that we look up to coming out with like all types scandals, of stories, yeah. scandals. That, so that's that's a that's a world that we don't know, and we have no right to I don't judge or judge. like or base our lives on or like the the opinions of the an entire community. Unless you put so, pineapple on pizza. No, stop. No, I'm just joking. I'm joking. Side note, like pineapple on pizza is delicious. So I've never it's tried amazing. it. Pause. Deuce. I've never tried pineapple. It. Pause. Pineapple chicken and jalapeno. Pineapple and um, jalapeno. I put I've, it in my Nando's tr- burger. Never tried it. Especially, I don't. I don't need a Nando's Show burger without the pineapple. Time. Yeah, we're gonna make a on video. the pizza. Jalapeno chicken. Yo, Ayan's like freaking out right now. If you're listening to New this. York, New York isn't putting pineapples on pizzas. 
Yo, he's stressing out, like, really. What? Go, go on. You, you got a point. Go on. Go on. It's okay. It's <laughs> over now. Uh, we don't um, have to tamper. I see the tears that. coming out. I, uh, yeah, bro. I, I'm I getting you. emotional right now. I feel you. Dude, learn taste. Whoa. Pause. All I gotta say. <laughs> Wait, what, what is your feeling towards pineapple There's pizza? The... Enough said, I feel like. Okay. Yeah. That was, yeah. Sorry. Okay. I get it. Um, we were watching this commercial. I showed you guys this commercial right before mm-hmm. we Ooh. started this. Um, and it was this Heineken ad, a beer, right? Uh, I want to discuss this and see what your guys' opinions are on this. Um, so this commercial has a, uh, a beer bottle run, like being slid across and a, and a bar. Lots of diversity in the commercial. Uh, you see a lot of African African Americans, uh, you know, biking and like um, all types of different things going as the bottle is going across mm-hmm. the the bar. As it slides past them, and then at the end, a lighter woman. Um, was she white? She was. She was of lighter skin. Yeah. Of white skin. Mm-hmm. Okay, so she the the bottle finally lands in her hands, right? After it has gone through all these other people. Mm-hmm. Most of them being African American. I think all of them actually. Yeah, I think they And then the all, slogan yeah. at the end pops up says lighter is better. Sometimes lighter is better. Which is so but yeah. Right. Yeah. Um did you guys think anything of that? Immediately. Bro. It wasn't until that thing had popped up till I was like, Oh wow, this is messed up. But then I kept rewatching it and I was like, How did they even like how it did it clicked this... for you right away? That's your first that's your initial thought? Okay, if I'm being honest, I obviously found out about it after the, the chance thing after he, Chance the rapper had already talked about it. So Chance the rapper tweeted about it and said, like, yo, that Heineken commercial. Right. Was, so was then, it new so, or but was it an old commercial? I didn't it was new. Yeah, yeah. I didn't get it. Like I was watching it and it's not like oh it was sliding past all these people and the white one picked up. It wasn't until the sign popped up and then I was like oh lighter is better oh snap and then it just like at that point it hit me and i was like how did this get past Mm. their marketing team who told them this was okay did they not learn anything from like any other companies h&m pepsi like anything like were they trying to make a big uproar maybe they were trying to win white america i'm just kidding let me i'm going too far now but anyways what did you guys think I feel like companies nowadays are trying to start controversy because their name just like gets. You think the company's trying to do that? I don't know. Maybe, like it's How's just that weird good for them. I, I mean, mean, their they names get, out their there. Name Everybody's gets out. talking like, about Heineken. You know that the whole bad press is good press. Like H and yeah, is doing fine in, now. Like you know, and like. No, but they lost so much money. Did they the lose a lot of, of money? But their brand awareness. I I don't know. Like maybe a lot of people are like no, but maybe a lot of people are like oh now I know what Heineken is. You know, or like how many white people are probably drinking more Heineken? Not white people like generally, but like racist white people. Racist white people. Yeah, but do, do you think would appeal to that? Would, like the, it's not like no. Nah. I mean, I'm I'm shooting from the hip, right? Because like I watched it once and I look at it, and like I don't know, like it, you know, we always talk about diversity, right, and representation. Um, and we always focus on the people like in front of the screen, right? So the actors and actresses. But we don't focus on the people who actually create the content, right? And I feel like this is a case of the writers of the advertisement were, I mean, I don't know who they were, right? But like if I had to take a guess, they weren't the most diverse group of people because, I mean, anyone or, you know, anyone with like some level of cognizance would be like, this is not okay. But this is a very well known brand. And the fact yeah. that the creators thought this was okay, I, I just can't fathom that. And there's, every but there's, single person like, it passed people, by. Really? I'm pretty be, sure it was like, black. Was that done on purpose? Well, and you think Do it's you feel like, like it was it an accident? I don't know. Like, how can that be an accident? The, okay, it, so is, for example, the H and M thing, I could see how that, that's yeah. an accident. That's a very like I could see how that could like fall through the cracks. Mm. How does something like this, something that they plan out, let's have it slide every by shot, our, every second? I'm gonna have this beer slide across all these people who I'm pretty sure almost I think every person was black. And then it stops at the one white person. But what, what's, what's very interesting is this, right? And it goes, sometimes lighter is better. So black Americans usually don't get that much reputation in advertisements or in acting, these kind of things, right? So the, you're telling me that the one time they consciously found... All. All. Like, literally all, right? That, that's... I mean, I don't, I don't see why they would do it on purpose. Like, it doesn't make sense to me. Like, from an mm-hmm. like, economics standpoint, right? It just seems stupid, but like... I the economics major has spoken. Yeah. <laughs> are people that right. lashed out against this commercial woke or are they fake woke? Woke. 
I think they have eyes. I don't know. Like they're yeah. Like that's actually well, a better answer. I I, I mean, oh, like, you don't want to use that word. Yeah, I I just think that like. I don't yeah, buy it. Yeah, I, I don't. I don't buy it. You don't think it's r- racist or wait? What do you mean? Like you just think it's like oh casual. You think it was I like think a it's coincidence? Dumb pe- I think it's dumb people that made the commercial. You think st- just stupid people made the commercial? Yeah, but it's like, like years, bro. Like. They've been making commercials for like what 20, 30, 40. 50 I want to see years. the people that made the commercial. Mm. I got to see how and old they are. And this one commercial is like really weird. I don't know. I just I mean also I think too like there's it was weird that yeah. that that it said that at the end. That's yeah. all I'll say. Right. But that that's the whole up. point. But it could have been like like old white dudes that are like, "Oh, like this is our star of the commercial." And then it's like, "Oh, wait, we need we need diversity." Well, and then that's when they put in the rest of them. Well, it, okay, people take commercials very seriously. Like literally, every like second is like thought planned out. and, and thought out. And you could out. see that every second was thought and out. And th- the fact that like every well, this goes with the entire thing that we were talking about at the beginning about like everything is out there. Uh, everybody has an opinion, and everything is looked at on a microscope now. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, yeah, like I do agree. There's bigger problems in the world. Yeah, I think. Mm-hmm. But that's what I'm saying. Like, yeah. I don't. Who cares? I think there's bigger problems in the world, but I still think it's an issue that nobody thought it was a problem before they actually put it out into the world. Like so somebody really should have caught that. And also, we have to, somebody should have caught that. We have to be cognizant of you know. And to be honest with you, I'm the one who made this remark, but I have to be cognizant of the fact that I'm saying there's bigger problems in the world, but I'm not black. Yeah, yeah. true. Yeah. Right. So imagine it was all Desi people, and it was like sometimes less smell is better. For example, right? <laughs> no, I'll, I'll right, my sake, right? right. <laughs> Yeah. I will be you know, in my bag about this, right? Like that, that means I'll be in my feelings about it. In case people don't know what that means, <laughs> not from New York. But like, you know, you know what I mean? Like, so for, so so for me to say right now that there's yeah, bigger yeah. problems in the You're world right. is a little bit like you know in, uh, insensitive, to be honest with you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'm thinking about it right now. But like, to be honest, I would have found that hilarious. I mean, I, I think you're saying brown that people now. About, like smell it. But no, no, but I'm just saying that if nah, I, I, I was, if so. I'm speaking like. If I was a black person and I saw this, I could, and me not being a black person, I already found it offensive. But it's, it's different too, right? So like being smelly, right? Like being seen as smelly is like annoying, but it's not life or death. I mean, also, it, it, that's something you can change. You can't change being light yeah, or dark. No, no, and the whole point is the whole concept of being light skin, dark skin, right? It literally like people were like, African Americans were killed for this stuff. Yeah. Mm-hmm. For you know what I mean? Like being smelly is like, all right, if you call me smelly, whatever, right? Like, but it's a different story when like, you know what's uh, you know what's what's his name? Um, all these all these you know young black men getting shot in the streets, mm-hmm. these kind of things, right? Why? Because they're just darker. Yeah. And so you're telling me the lighter is better? Yeah. Oh, where that's, that's how that's how we're doing this right now. You know what I mean? Like so in a way, I kind of see what they're saying that okay. you know they're, maybe because this this builds in the subconscious, right? Of yeah. pe- of all people, mm-hmm. right? So that lighter is better. They're just like, yeah. putting that into the world. Like that's like I don't know, like almost pushing the like Eurocentric. So, like so I mean, ideals yeah. into the world like but in a subconscious way so i'm kind of flip-flopping right now but like you flopped hard yeah. i was gonna say that you yeah. just you just took a u-turn yeah, yeah. i mean like i paused everything you said was right everything you said was right was yeah. one yeah. side one side and the other yeah like but like you could see it both sides yeah, yeah. also we, we, like, i'm just saying we have to be careful because we're not from the community you know, like, i think that's we just we, yeah. because of all, i mean like for us we see it as there's bigger fish to fry Right, because this fish doesn't involve, or it's not in our pond. Yeah, right. just, so to speak. I, I think you know like I mean? the way like Frost thing and, and like me too is like that. You know, there's this issue of just like ignore and cr- try to create or like try to f- really embrace a situation that highlights you mm-hmm. very well and much better, and like kind of not ignore this problem, but you know, it's like it's not even in your lane. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm not laughing. <laughs> She's just such a kid. <laughs> I'm doing the same thing you're doing right now. <laughs> Yo, I can't do that. And then the I'm biggest smile so on her face. <laughs> my they have my their legs, legs are hurting. It's literally like almost two o'clock in the morning. Where we had Ikna today, the performance today. I'm tired. We're I gonna was... end. We're gonna end on a on a good and fun note, or it could be on a really competitive note. It's gonna be competitive. Uh-oh. Um, yeah. so there, there's this uh, bracket going around on uh, Twitter. It came out after like all this March Madness stuff, but um, there's one that is. Disney versus Pixar, right? Mm-hmm. And Not so, Disney versus Pixar, it's Disney Pixar. Well, the the whole left side is Disney, and then the whole right well, side is Pixar, Pixar. is Disney. I know, but I'm saying like oh, okay. Disney animation yeah. versus Pixar animation. It is competitive, I guess, right? You guys, yeah. are, you guys are fighting, right? <laughs> oh, <I'm like, laughs> Chill out. I better throw hands, bro. Like. <laughs> so uh, I'm just going to name the, the, um, 
the movies going down the list and then we'll we're not going to go through the entire bracket but we'll do our final fours so on the left side on the disney side it's lion king tarzan princess and the frog lilo and stitch tangled big hero six frozen moana aladdin hercules little mermaid pocahontas mulan zootopia beauty and the beast and nightmare before christmas on the pixar side it's up brave toy story toy story 2 coco cars toy story 3 the Good Dinosaur, Ratatouille, A Bug's Life, Nemo, uh, Finding Nemo, Inside Out, Monsters Inc., Cars, The Incredibles, and Wall-E. Um, and so you had to, you know, have them compete against each other. It goes into uh, a whole bracket and your final four, and then your winners. So let's just give our final four and who won, mm. um, and then and then maybe like a brief breakdown Which of way? like way, my way. of like. How about you start? Go ahead. Right. So my final four was Toy Story 3, uh, Finding Nemo, Lion King, and Aladdin. That's a good one. And who'd you have winning? It was close, but Toy Story 3. Toy Story 3 won for me. Nice. So who was Toy Story 3 against? Uh, it was against yeah. Lion King. Lion King. Lion King. And Toy Story 3 won. I mean, it's like an iconic movie. Like, I don't know. Like, like the third one, though. Yeah. Okay. Third one was dope. Third one was, it was so sad, man. When he, when he I'm not sure why the second one is on here. Uh, well, was, that, that I like the second one. I liked it, but it's definitely not the best one out of. It's the probably the I think least third, best. Third, I think okay. third is the best one. Out of them. Okay, Amber. Um, out of what are all of mine? Four. Okay, yeah. Um, so I did Pocahontas, Moana. Wait, I'm sorry. I did Pocahontas. The I'm sorry, Moana, and then Pocahontas. <laughs> Toy Story and Nemo. This is the worst bracket I've ever no. heard. Wait, Toy Story is good. Wait, who won? Wait, who won? wait, oh, um, Moana. Pause. Pause. <laughs> Only no. I, I have a good reason for it, and it, it has a lot to do with the fact that I'm a teacher. And and can I explain it, or should I? If wait you're watching right now, pause. Through? Fast forward. I'm playing. I'm playing. I'm playing. Is play. everybody um, <laughs> giving their first, their final four, and then we're explaining it? What are we doing? Yeah, just go ahead and okay. tell us why. So you're the wrong. reason why. I, okay, <laughs> excuse me. I mean, I think a lot of these movies are great, cool, whatever. The reason why I think Moana wins is because there's not a lot of movies. I'll take uh, Frozen aside. But um, Moana's the only one where there's no love interest at all. Like, there's, it's the only Disney princess where there's no love interest. It's all about a strong, powerful female lead. She's super Lion persistent. Lion King doesn't have love interest. Frozen. She's super persistent. Um, she's constantly, and, and I love Frozen, okay? But, like, the reason why I like Moana yeah. is that she has been given this task, right? But she Hercules goes... Hercules doesn't either. Can no, you, he has a love interest. Can you, girl. can you let me explain why I think Moana's Why are you mansplaining, badass? bro? Stop mansplaining. Yeah. Literally. Zootopia doesn't. Can you please understand? <laughs> Wait, this is my time to explain. I didn't know it was your time to resolve oh. that. There's five movies on here that don't have a love interest. No, there's... Uh, okay. going, I'm speaking for female leads. All the Disney princess movies are constantly like, okay, here's a love interest. Like every single Disney princess movie except for Frozen is like that. But Moana puts other people for herself. She like has this element of persistence, this strong female role. She's really humble. Like she doesn't like take part in like the deceptive things that are happening in the village. Like she like... I don't know. I think that if as a as 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 a mother, if I had a daughter, I would think that Moana would be a really good movie for my daughter to watch versus like Snow White, which like she needs like a man to kiss her before she can even wake do, up or like think... Beauty and the Beast and like all this stuff. Like I just think that like it it works really well for right now. And I think it's good for little girls. Did you, did you think the factor of Moana being like a like fictional, at least fictional, um, like princess of color versus like Snow White being like a white girl? Like, is that part of your? Like, I think it's or? just like I think it adds to the idea of like you know Diversity. everybody's Diversity. kind of mm. you know like everybody can be anything and everything is beautiful. Mm. Man, you went really deep with it. I liked it, and now I feel bad. Good. Yeah, because you were just being a jerk about it the whole time. But on the real, like that movie, like sucks. Yeah, for us, <laughs> like your your final four was like trash. Okay, your, for for what reason? I like your trash? right side. I like. I like the reason for it. I love the reason for it. As far as like enjoyability. Okay, <laughs> if I had to choose any other one, it would have been Nemo. It would have been Nemo. All right. Well, Shamir, my final four. 
Uh, this was tough, but Big Hero Six. What? Big Hero Six. Yeah. It's not even like a classic. Dude, Big Hero. Well, I like. For me, I was watching with my younger brother, mm. and that just was like crazy. And the fact that like your own teacher, like you can't really, you know, you have like a bunch of d- different friends, and they're just have different abilities and all that and the fact that they created this like robot that's like so lovable and so mm. like caring i think that was just crazy that like you know it, it they engineered themselves you know like a buddy and the fact that we're going in that route was just like really cool like he, he didn't have he didn't have were really soft. he didn't have an older brother right because he spoiler alert he died in the beginning and pause if you didn't watch the movie <laughs> fast forward <laughs> He but, said he said so, in the beginning. So his older brother basically <laughs> created a robot to like take his place. Mm-hmm. And like me watching that with my younger brother, oh, we were just like, like an crying. Wait, you, you guys actually have real stories. My other was I just like the movie. I know like, that's what like I'm movie. saying. Like, well, I like those stories. And I feel bad reason. after you, you guys, guys didn't explain. cry on up. Yeah, I, like, did, I, I didn't cry. But I didn't cry during monster oh, day. But, but, but the only good part of up was the beginning. The rest was True. so boring. The Toy Story three when he gives the toys away, like oh, he yeah. gets older. That was that. Was that, was that. Yeah. I that, think that the only that movie that I cried in all these is Monsters Inc. When Boo and Sully got separated and the doors closed, and when he op- when she opened it too. again, he was gone. I like yeah. I was like, that was sad too. <sighs> Sorry, I had to explain that because that's the only movie I've like been super teary for. All right, Frost. Let's all hear right. this lame bracket. Literally, oh yeah, this is the greatest bracket ever. It was so bad. Was Final four. Lion King. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mulan. Okay. Mm-hmm. Toy Story. Incredibles. Okay, that's strong. All right. Championship. We got Mulan versus the Incredibles. Oof. Winner, Incredibles. Nice. Okay. Why? I got to explain that. I mean, you were, we you were like, taking a dump on all their explanations. <laughs> like. So what's your reasoning? Well, I, feel like, like, I feel like the Incredibles is just, like, a really passionate, like, family movie. No, it's just, like, a sick superhero movie. And... Mm. It was enjoyable and badass. Okay. Yeah. I love Mulan. I love the message in Mulan. Mm-hmm. LK classic. Right. Lion King is classic, yeah. That's my Incredibles wins, man. Um, thank you, nobody, for sending in that question. Uh, <laughs> thank you, me, for making that. Actually, you know, before, before we... I can ask you guys a question. I can ask you a question. Where do you guys see yourself... Um, like personally, individually, as a group, as a collective, as a company, in the next five years. Can I answer it for us, please, please, please? Yeah, go please, ahead. Please. Amber will answer this on the behalf of. Mm-hmm. Okay, so I think as a team, we like to say that we don't like to speak for the future because even a year ago, we didn't know like we'd all be sitting here doing this podcast together. How about you, sir? For me? Yeah. Actually, it's funny you mentioned that. Like for me, I'm a big believer in like not broadcasting my moves. Um, especially publicly before I make them right so like, sure. on the way here we talked about a lot of things I'm up to right now like behind the scenes yeah. um, and ultimately listen like you know not to get too religious on everyone right now but like you know we plan and a lot of plans and a lot of the best of planners right and at the end of the day like you know a year ago like not even six months ago right I was just some kid like doing nothing you know what I mean and six months later I'm still like doing nothing but like now I no. have you know somewhat more of a platform right and like six months ago, when I was bumping a Nikon's music, I would have never thought that like I would be sitting six months later with Nikon, right? And his manager. So Anik's manager actually followed me on Instagram first, okay. and it's cra- it's crazy how life works and how like you know the whole concept of like fade and all those things, whatever, right? I tried to reach out God's to God's plan, yeah, literally, yeah. right? I tried reaching out to Anik in November, December, right? Nothing happened. I interviewed for the On the Rise series Rob Markman, who is this like like he's like the hip hop equivalent to Anderson Cooper. That's what mm-hmm. they said to him, right? He let me interview him. I posted a thing about him. And Econ's manager, Darmic, saw it and followed me on Instagram. Mm. And that was my opportunity. And that's how I linked up with Anik. Wow. Okay. So, like, these things work in ways that, like, yeah. honestly, like, I could never have planned this. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And, like, so ultimately, you know, let's see where it goes. But, you know, at the end of the day, when it's all said and done, I just want to make sure that, you know, once again, I make sure that at least in my micro community that kids growing up, after I'm gone, have it a little bit better than I had it. And that's, that's pretty much my MO. That's dope, dude. Nice. Um, we wish you all the success I and happiness. Um, and, and you always have 
our support with you. By the way, I'm like the like biggest fan. I watch all their stuff. You know what I mean? Like I, I actually like do watch all the podcasts. I watch all the videos. Um, I actually watched back all. I watched all your vlogs the other day. I'm like, bro, it's it's it's, it's real. But like you guys, you guys, like I'm not just saying this to like butter you guys up. I actually do message you guys. Have no, keep stuff. going. <laughs> no, dude, no, that no, means a lot. You know, yeah, I appreciate that. No, and you're Thank you're so very. Much. That's why we wanted to have you. It's like, it's like you're you really feel like you know a friend that like we can just talk to and like have these awesome uh, conversations with all the time. But um, tell everybody what you got going on right now, where they can follow you and stuff. Yeah, so and you we'll can, link it up in the description. You can follow me on Twitter, Instagram at Ionic Bond. That's A Y Y A N I C Bond. Yeah, very nice name. I know. Um, I am, so my podcast is What Muslims Look Like. You can find that at WMLL Podcast on, across all platforms. And yeah, I got some other things on the way. Um, got some interesting people I'm interviewing soon. Um, don't want to leak that information too soon. Look out, look out for it. Look out, look out, yeah. Um, and you made it all the way here from New York. Mm-hmm. You sat down, it's two in the morning. Yeah, I'm we, tired. You made it here and we've got one last and very important question sure. for you. Sure. Since you've made it on the podcast, Shimmer, you want to ask that question? If you could describe yourself in any flavor, oh. what flavor would it be, I forgot and why? About this, bro. I forgot about this question. You yeah. got to come prepared, right. Ionic Bond, chicken over rice, halal style flavor. That's my flavor. Okay, why? There, there have been like weeks where I've that's the only thing I've ate. Okay, like literally, like I. I How does that describe you? You, yeah. Because listen, it's a very like, chicken over rice is in every culture, right? Arroz con pollo, chicken over rice, desi style, you know, like horma, chaval, biryani, palau. You know what I mean? So I'm, I'm, I think I'm kind of versatile in the sense of like, it's kind of deep actually. Like I like, like hip hop. I like acting. I like law. I like politics. I like you know these kind of things, and I can kind of find my niche in all these kind of environments. So like chicken over rice, you can have it made in different ways, but I taste good in all forms. So. You know what I mean? Wow, I like that. Pause. Whoa. He like tied how it does, up. How I does this I, man do that? I don't I was, know. That was how crazy. That. I was like, yeah. I'm, I'm I actually think he's going on a tangent. I'm, I'm, and then I'm he's a politician, like, bro. No. That's what I, I, I literally get paid <laughs> to speak. You just lied out of your teeth. That's no, what you're no. saying. No, no. I mean, sort of, yeah. But like, <laughs> like you made that up on the spot. Yeah, but, yeah. But you, but it's you know how like you lie enough, but then you start believing it. Yeah. That's what that was. Well, that's why I like freestyling a lot because I can literally come up on the fly and just like you know what I mean. Dude. Thank you for we're, freestyling. We're not, we're, not, we're not doing that right now. But like, <laughs> thank you for freestyling this entire interview, um, or, or conversation, whatever it was. Mm-hmm. But um, it was a lot of fun, dude. Honestly, awesome. um, we wish you the best, man. Was, I appreciate it, bro. And it's always it's always a pleasure talking to you. Thank you, bro. I appreciate um, it. And for everybody listening, thank you for tuning in to another episode of Strange Flavors. It's been another week, another flavor, a little less stranger. We'll talk to you next time. Yeah. Okay. Have some fun with this. Okay, yeah, okay.